All right, at Rock Addicts, this is DJ Rem from Rock Addict Radio, and I have the band March into Paris on the line. How's everybody doing today? Great. Doing good. Well, let's, uh, let's start this off with everybody can go around the room and introduce themselves and their spots in the band. This is Jen. I am the lead singer. Jordan on drums. Eric on bass. And I am Kevin on guitar. Okay. Mandy's not with us yet. We're one guitar short right now. What the heck? Too much partying last night or what? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. He's busy at the donut shop eating donuts with the cops. <laughs> trying to make friends. <laughs> so, okay, how long have you guys been together as a band? How long has March into Paris existed? About five years. And then, and how back five years ago, how did you guys all get together and, and, and start this up? We started with, it was me, Kevin, and Randy, um, and then we uh, had a different drummer at the time, and then Jen came on board probably about a year later. A year later. Um, she came in and just really blew us away with her talent and, and, and her, uh, just like she... My heard. amazingness. Yeah, her, I'm just her general amazing, her general amazing, <laughs> and then we went around with that lineup for a while, and then um, luckily we just added Jordan about four months ago. About four months ago, so um, it feels a lot more complete now with this with this lineup than it really ever has. Okay, well, very cool. And I have to tell you the uh, the tracks that you guys sent me, the tracks I've heard. You know, I think you guys rock. I've been playing you on my radio show. I also have you in the 24-7 stream at the station. So you guys are getting some rotation that way. And I just want to thank you for taking time to talk to me. And because I honestly don't remember even how I ran into you guys, but I'm, I'm glad we did. So. All right. Awesome. We got the uh, other member of our band, Randy. Oh, Randy. I guess it was worth it to us. Taking a while to look really good right now. These people wearing the cop glasses. No, <laughs> <laughs> That's all when he's wearing cop glasses. We're just talking about him. <laughs> cops and donuts. That's awesome. Where's my donut, man? Where's my donut? Yeah, man. Where, where's, where's his donut, man? <laughs> yeah, I still know you. <laughs> so, okay, so how often do you guys all get together and practice? Two to three times a week. Um, sometimes four. We like to play by ear. There's times where. We all kind of get creative and call each other, and we'll get, uh, get together late at night, early morning. Uh, but typically, two to three times a week for many, many hours. Okay, very nice. And now, this question I have is going to be a, another one for everybody in the band, so you can go around the room. Just, I'm curious to know, uh, you know, what musical influences you've had in your life that made you want to do something like this. Um, well, my my influences are very very wide because I grew up playing piano and doing classical and and music theater type music and but I, I love rock and I love everything I, I love the Foo Fighters a lot. There, um, Dave is basically a, a huge idol of mine. I definitely love his songwriting and and um, right now I'm definitely into Hailstorm as well. Um, there, it's more of um, I really appreciate the lead vocalist of Hailstorm and how she's another female in rock who can just you know just blow I mean she's amazing so it's uh so I would say currently um I'm kind of just listening to like so many different things but that's just me so um I, I grew up listening to everything um so for the drums I mean you kind of have to listen to everything in order to be able to place what you need to place in the music um but Ginger Baker was a huge influence um Lars from Metallica um and Carter Buford from Dave Matthews. So, um, my biggest influence was Jimmy Hazel from Twenty Four Seven Spies. That's a band out of New York, actually. Um, I started off as a guitar player. Uh, me and Kevin switched about a year ago. Yeah, a month. Um, so my biggest influence on bass has got to be uh, Adam uh, from. Uh, you too. I just like how he keeps things like simplistic, but still grooving and still melodic. Uh, but that's for me. That's that's uh, where my influence are. I got quite a bit of influence. I'm gonna go cliche and say the biggest influence I got me in music would be my dad. 
due to the fact that when I was six, he put a guitar in my hands, and it kind of opened my doors to you know, creativity. Uh, being a guitar player and a bass player, my influences go from everywhere. Like, I'm a big Chris, Chris Squire fan from Yes. You can't go wrong with, you know, the attitude from Yes. Um, when it goes to more guitar, you catch me listening to, like, everything. You'll hear me singing country my guitar, uh, taking some pop stuff, taking my guitar. Right now, I would say, ultimately, I'm huge on Covey and Cambria and Minus the Bear, so I do kind of pick up a lot of the vibes and and chaos that those two bands kind of put out there. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Soundgarden, Neil Young, uh, Beatles, Riley Minogue. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's about it. <laughs> uh, let me nice. Out there. I'm a big Kesha fan too because she knows oh, how to rock the oh, way. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate that. So, where did the name March into Paris come from? How'd you guys name the band? Oh my god, this is like only because he's the one who was it. It was you who made it up, right? You're the one who decided. So you have, so you have to have a description. And and here, you guys are pretty good with so just just saying. It's it's actually a metaphor. Cities represent kind of the the zenith of of human achievement and architecture and and society and and art and you know it's it's where kind of the trajectory of, of evolution has, has kind of taken us and Paris being the most the most famous city in the world we wanted we we're using that as a representation of what we're trying to achieve which is become better people become better artists become better citizens and so we're marching towards that goal. Like, like Paris is, is, we're not saying like marching to Paris as in marching to the city, but we're saying marching, marching towards that, you know, that our aspirations are to achieve as much as we can achieve in, in this life and become as, uh, the best that we can become. Okay, well, very cool. I, I love that there's a story behind it. That's awesome. Some bands I talk to, they're like, ah, we just flipped through a phone book. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, okay, I so... I think it's line where you, you decide your stripper name and, and it's always like, you know, the first name of your street and your, your last name. and is that, I would think that's how a lot of men... <laughs> You're probably right. Probably right. So, okay, these tracks that you guys sent me, are these off of, like, a full album or are these off an EP? Where do these come from? Those are off of our last EP called Beautiful Chaos that you can pick up on iTunes. That's the second EP we've done. We did one before that called Shields and Luna. So those tracks are, are you can you can go to actually Spotify. It's the same of this yeah. That or Rhapsody and listen to them there. You can pick them up on on uh, iTunes. But yeah, those we've released two EPs. We're releasing a uh, single. On the first, actually, and then another one in, in late February. Late February, and then we'll probably have three more okay. ready to go around March, April. Yeah, so around March and April, we'll release a couple more. But um, this year, we're going to be giving everybody a lot of new material that they'll get to hear, and we're really excited for that. Yeah, very good. And where did you guys uh, record at? What studio did you use? We both two the two first EPs were recorded at. Uh, Pop Smear Records in Santa, uh, San Rafael, California, with, with uh, Scott Lamas, who did incredible work. And now we're working with Sean Stack out of Fat Cat in Sacramento, and uh, we're really, really happy with what he's pulling out of us. We're working with him with uh, production, with um, recording. Like he's doing, he's doing everything, and, and we couldn't be happier about it. These these new songs, I, we feel are our best, and we've already been talking to him about where we're going to be going with the, the other songs we're going to be bringing, them and, and we think that uh, our people that have heard us before will really like what they're going to hear uh, now. Very cool, and I tell you, because they, they definitely sound top-notch, and I always ask that question, where do people record? I'm just always curious, you know, because the sound is definitely there, so keep doing it, definitely. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so where is a good place for people to go to find to find out more about Marching to Paris? What uh, social sites and such do you guys use? Uh, 
Um, you can go to facebook.com slash march into Paris. You can go to march into Paris.com. Um, you can go to Reverb Nation and find us there. We're also on iTunes and Amazon, Spotify. Spotify is a really good one because I'm just going to say I love, I'm a, I'm a Spotify user myself. But you can listen to like, so much different music out there that you don't get to hear on um, Pandora sometimes too. So, I mean, um, you, you can hear some so many different sites at this point. So. We're everywhere. <laughs> Very cool, yeah. And I agree with the whole Spotify. I love Spotify. I've, I've found bands that I would have never found because of Spotify, so it's awesome. Absolutely. And it's totally worth it. I actually have a premium membership because I want to get to hear anything I want to hear. Right. <laughs> Just like it over and over again. Yep. Cool. So, are you guys good about, uh, with your Facebook page, are you good about responding to fans and stuff? Yeah, we're good. We actually lately have been getting quite a bit of fan emails, fan letters. We're actually recently building a fan wall in our studio because we're getting a lot of feedback. From awesome. Them. We personally, like when we get comments or messages, we will go out of our way to respond to them. Because um, let's be honest, if it wasn't for the people out there listening and buying our stuff, we'd be nothing. Um, you know, the bigger we get, we're still going to try to find ways to make it happen and let them know that, yeah, we are here, we're listening. You know, we're pretty much in the same boat as as you guys are um, yeah we we're really good at responding to our fans very good well you were really good at responding to me so I can attest to that they're good <laughs> <laughs> okay so what um I guess what's the band's goals for the future where do you guys hope to be in a couple years with everything so um what we're doing now being as close as we are a family um known worldwide um I'm not saying we're going out there to be the next U2 or, you know, the next biggest thing. I mean, if it happened, it'd be nice, but just to be able to do what we're doing um, for a living, um, getting getting by, being able to just work on our music and produce it to the world, I guess that we are mingle. Um, that way you don't have to do, you know, your basic nine-to-five job. We can just come and create together um, and, you know, like I say, if we can each make 70 grand a year, we'd all be, be in good shape. <laughs> Well, I wish you the best of luck. I hope that I hope everything works out for you guys, for sure. Thank you. What something I almost forgot to ask? Do you guys have any uh, live shows coming up that we should talk about? Yes, we have a live show in San Francisco at the Parkside in San Francisco. The Parkside, the Parkside in San Francisco. That's going to be an early show, and it's, and it's going to be free at five thirty. Our next, uh, we'll see. Our next show after that. That is. That is all the way picked down. It's going to be March. Yeah, we got one in Sacramento. Yeah, we got one in Sacramento at either Blue Rock or Shenanigans. Shenanigans. That's going to be on the 16th with a show band called uh, Zero Client and another one called In the Silent. Um, right now, we're just kind of we're, we're building up our, our show base for uh, for next year. So we're, we're, right now, we're going to be in San Francisco a couple of times, and then. We have a music fest in Yuba City, uh, California, that's going to be on the 13th of April. Um, that uh, if you have a chance, you need to go check it out. We, we, we have a pretty clear color lineup, and it's going to have all the uh, mix and granny pending festivals on. And we have all of these shows listed on our, we'll have them on our Facebook, we'll have them on Reverb. We have every every site that we make sure that our music that we have a listing of our shows. And you can also join our mailing list if you would like to know where um, we're playing again, we like to send them out to people in their own area, so they're not getting something if they're in if they're in Sacramento and they don't want to drive to San Francisco. We'll just send them something whenever we're in Sacramento, so um, they can do that too. Yeah, pretty much just look at our our web pages because we post all of our shows when we get them. There's top where you know possibly going up north to like Washington, Oregon, down south LA. So you know the best way is since we don't have them posted, it's just constantly check up on us, you know, and we'll. Uh, <coughs> Keep you guys informed of them you know, via Facebook, Reverb Nation. And the mailing list. <laughs> and the mailing list, yes. Check out the mail, get on the mailing list. That way we come to you. You don't have to do so much work to find us. <laughs> exactly. So, w- do you guys have any, or have you at least been thinking about, you know, getting out of, you know, coming east? Absolutely. We would love to come east. Right now, we're not quite ready yet because, like, so we're still writing. Right. We want to make sure what we have is tight to a perfection, we have all um, new material ready, um, you know, so that's definitely something we're thinking about, not in any time near future, but definitely, you know, 
sometime later on. Yeah, hopefully, like, hopefully um, late summer this year is... Is is what is is what we're projecting, but like Kevin says, we just want to be ready because there's nothing worse than like kind of presenting a bad show to to people. Right, especially when you're trying to uh, get yourself known. You it needs to be top notch. I get it, definitely. Yeah, and make sure that we have all the all the extra flashy lights and everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Okay, so. What uh, what sets you guys apart? You know, when you guys do a live show, why should people come to your shows? What are they gonna get, What are they gonna get from your show that they're not gonna get from a lot of bands? They're gonna get gin. <laughs> <laughs> Front and center. Show. Jen's gonna do this little flap of her leg with her sit up. I don't wear a wig. She's gonna link you right here. Right. No, I, I do. I do make a lot of eye contact, and sometimes it makes a couple people uncomfortable. Other people make them a little too excited. <laughs> But uh, no, at our live shows, we we make sure we get people something to something to stick around for. Because you know, when you're at a club or a bar, um, there's so many distractions. You know, you want them to stay in front of the stage instead of going off to the bar, and, and you want to keep their attention. So you know, Kevin jumps around and he's all crazy. And same thing with the guys. We interact together, and and I make sure to interact with the crowd and with the guys. And and we just have fun. If you're not having fun on stage, people can tell. If you're if you're standing around just playing your instrument to play, then why why are you there? Just get off the stage. I mean, nobody wants to watch yeah, that. Yeah, pretty, pretty, much, home just to your song. pretty much what we're a firm believer is we believe we have the music to please your ears. But when you go to a live show, you're not just paying to hear it. You're also paying to see a show. So we're firm at, at creating an, a, like a really energetic experience on stage as well. So it's kind of like you're, you know having, you know, sex and dinner at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Like the Very good. I can't think of anything better than that. <laughs> I'm, if you, we'll make sure to satisfy that craving for you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What's on the menu to know? I want to say something. <laughs> that was recorded. <laughs> So, speaking of crazy things, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you guys at a live show you've done? Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> There's so many things. Oh, wow. Uh, the, what, it, what would you, would you say? Well, it depends. It depends on the live show because there, are, there have been crazy things like accidents, but then there have been crazy things like... Um, well, like Jen choking, Jen, like, Jen choked on her hair. <laughs> I just, okay, we have played... Uh, it was like one of our... It was our first or second show in L.A., right? Um, it, was, it, was, it, was. It, was, it was one of the first shows that we had in L.A. ever. And I was so excited because we were playing this, you know, all-female lineup rock show. And, and we were, it was, I mean, it was years ago, like probably three years ago. And um, and it was at, what was it? Um, the Whiskey. The Whiskey. And, and I was like, yeah, I'm on the stage. Legendary. And that's what I'm singing. And we get to the third song. It's my favorite song of our whole set. And I announced it. I'm like, Oh, this next song is one of my favorites, you know? <laughs> we, start, we start playing the song, and I'm singing it, and I get maybe, like, halfway into the verse, and I stop, <laughs> because I'm choking on one strand of air. <laughs> you don't know anybody who, people that sing know what I'm talking about, but if you try to sing or do anything with a piece of strand of hair in your throat, it doesn't work out very well. So I had to kind of, I just kind of, like, you know, kept rocking out with my little, like, Slightly head vein, and I turned around while they're still playing, and I and I ended up like sticking my finger down my throat to try and throw it up. Horrible! Sending a good message to the kids. Well, maybe not. Yeah, throw up. Uh, it can be your dream. A better, uh, I think a better story than that is the time that we were playing. I forget where we were at, but um, Kevin Kevin gets pretty wild oh, on stage, yeah. and so she, so Jen seeing. Kevin's behind her and, I, and they collided. So Kevin hits Jen in the back of the head with his with his face. Her mouth goes forward and hits her mic, and so she comes up like 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 just like pissed off. So she's like belting the note, and she has a mouthful of blood. And so <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was enough to make your teeth red, and it looks not good. But, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I have lipstick on. They won't tell the difference. <laughs> There's always a recent one too. It was crazy. It was actually more depressing. But we were playing a show in Modesto. And oh Randy, no! Randy got really excited and crazy, and the strap on his guitar uh, like kind of came off, and his beautiful gifts fell down and split in half. 
So uh, we all we all had a little burial session and cried a little bit after that show. <laughs> that's yes, that's that's sad and kind of funny at the same time. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for sharing those stories. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll make sure to give. We'll make sure to have some more face. That's happened, so we'll have more. To give yeah, you you're like if you like YouTube. We have to, we, we post videos on YouTube. We have a couple, you know, more crazy experiences on YouTube just kind of for for giggles. So there's a couple of other experiences that you can go check out and make you laugh. All right, I will definitely check them out. That'd be cool. So uh, here's the next question: Who in the band spends the most time in front of a mirror getting ready for the show? <laughs> oh. uh... Well, actually, I don't, I don't know how that could be because that's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, why would you... Probably me. Uh, during a... Uh, yeah. I have to look at Curtis behind the drum kit. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that would definitely be me as the girl in the band because uh, I've been, you know... I mean, I'm a natural beauty, but I'm just saying, sometimes you got to add a little add a little bit more to it. Eric has no hair. He doesn't but, have anything to do. But Eric's a contender because he constantly looks in the mirror and he looks at an outfit and he doesn't like it. And he'll go through like 13. Have you met me? Oh, you've sure. never been to my house. <laughs> but finally, he'll realize after the first outfit, he goes, well, this isn't good. And then he'll go back to, like, the first few and then start mixing. Oh, wow, well, Eric, that's so similar as I thought. For, like, an hour once, just to get ready for a show. Oh. Yeah, yeah. See? It's not always the girl. I, I know it. Yeah. That makes me kind of sad for him. <laughs> Well, you know, I've 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 spoken with quite a few uh, female fronted bands, and a lot of times it's not the female singer that's you know people have that perception, but it's it's not true. <laughs> no, usually it just takes the only time it would take me is just to do my makeup, and I've got that down pretty much with science super fast. Zah, uh, okay. So who in the band's the biggest prankster? Anybody like to, to pull tricks on y'all? Uh, oh, no, not. Well, you know, it's like back. You know, we have to more stupid shit. <laughs> we have to like, like with with Kevin <coughs> and Ellie. He's trying to walk around like naked. Oh, no, I didn't walk around. Oh, no, you tried to, and then you succeeded. I'm just saying. Um, and, and he and, and and he really we like were, hurt me we in my doing, mind. Uh, for a while, we were doing um, the Qaddafi game. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> the the Qaddafi game is when you when you um. When you walk up behind somebody and you stick something up their buttocks and you go, get off and like that. <laughs> um, and then, and then the, the crotch punching game. Yeah, like oh, we, me, yeah, me and the guys go through, well, just me and, and Kevin really mainly, we go through these, these, um, hitting each other in the, in the areas. <laughs> and I get him most of the time because he does it to other people, so I feel like I have to get him back because it doesn't hurt me as much as it hurts him. It's all random to you. Yeah. Know, but he hurts me on my ass. Because my butt, I don't always wear jeans. I wear like, I wear like some tighter things, and so the, there's not much material there. And so while I look good on stage, it does have some problems later on when he comes up and slaps me really hard, and it's just mean because it's just really red later. It's mean. <laughs> it's really fucking mean. That's a lot to explain to your Yeah, that is a lot to explain to my man. He's like, why? Why is this red? I didn't do that. <laughs> I was going to do that, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of prank, so we're pretty much just more based on having fun. That sounds good. Heck yeah. All right, anything else that... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice here. Anything else that you would like to tell everyone who's going to listen to this interview about you guys? Anything that I haven't asked that you want to make sure people know about March into Paris? Definitely just um, I want to make sure that everybody watches for our new singles that we're dropping. We're, the first one is going to be the beginning of January, so make sure to check. I mean, when you go on the Facebook, it'll definitely be all over there. Twitter, um, Reverb Nation, iTunes, everything. Um, we really want everybody to hear these new songs, especially the one that we're doing on, in January. It's called I Do Not Lie, and it is amazing. It's, I mean, this is the one that we're doing with um, Fat Cat Studios with Sean Stack, and it's just it's amazing. So I really want everyone to, to check that out and uh, give us some feedback. Tell us, let us know what you think, because this is de- definitely new. And, um, That's I think, for you. So. Yeah. <laughs> If yeah. you don't like it, then we're not doing our job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make sure when it's ready, you send it to me so I can get it on air, okay? Well, you'll be one of the first. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, I, I have... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, like, uh, just want to say, like, to fans, like, make sure that you go out and, and see live music and support live music. Um, 
those bands out there like us that are working really hard to to make something it be really um, it, it, the shows don't matter if, if if people if people don't come. You yeah, know? the number one thing to keep the scene alive is by actually going out there and and buying the downloads, seeing live shows. Because um, the more and more you don't go out there and see live shows, the more and more your scene's going to die. Then you're going to get stuck with a lot of electronic and techno music. And I don't think Noel's ready for that. <laughs> oh no, they're ready, but they're not going to like it. <laughs> like, what is all the music? You don't want Justin Bieber on every corner? Come on. I do. I personally do. But. <laughs> No, he's gonna get old really fast. You know, so he's getting, he is getting older actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you can't keep on doing the cash out and the call me maybe band. So just keep the scene alive by going on and seeing live shows. Exactly. Yeah, there's a difference with like with with nothing against that that kind of music or, or, or those kinds of artists, but the difference between you know when you have huge companies that can put millions of dollars behind the act just to even see if they work, like you know. Your locals don't have that. All they have is you. Right. You know, exactly. All the fans. Yep. Definitely, it's very important. Go support live shows. And we love our fans. Okay. The last thing I'd like to ask you guys to do is to make a couple of radio tags, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. So the first one, you can. One of you can do it. You can all do it together, however you guys want to do it. But just say, you know, this is March into Paris, and you're listening to RockAddictRadio.com. This is Mark and you're listening to rockaddictradio.com. Perfect. That was awesome. I win. Don't let slap. Okay, so now we still need to do it one more time, though. Okay. Because now I need you to say that all that, but I need you to say that you're listening to DJ Rem at Rock Addict Radio. DJ Rem at Rock Radio. Yep, perfect. Okay. Okay. This is March in Paris, and you're listening to DJ Rem on RockAdicRadio.com. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Very cool. We're not. We're not all horrible. <laughs> we're better at playing music yeah. than we are. Yeah. We actually write music. <laughs> <laughs> I have to write. I have to write all my stuff down. Yeah. 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 With your tracks on the station, and within the next week or so, I will have this uh, uploaded to YouTube, and I will send you the link so we can help spread it all over the place. All right, great. Thank you so much for the interview. Okay. We will definitely be sure to send you a new single once we drop it. Yes, please do, so I can get it on air. Excellent. Be looking for that at the beginning of the year. Okay. Very good. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Hey, thanks everybody. You guys take care. Have a good New Year. You too. Bye.